King Charles III is officially Britain's reigning monarch. The eldest son of the late Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh was crowned on Saturday at London's Westminster Abbey. The ceremony was held at London's Westminster Abbey and was attended by 100 heads of states. The coronation ceremony dates back to the medieval period and much of it remains unchanged. The ceremony reflected Charles's efforts to show that the 1,000-year-old monarchy is still relevant in a country that is much more diverse than it was when his mother was crowned 70 years ago. The coronation ceremony included many historic elements underscoring the ancient traditions through which power has been passed on to new kings and queens throughout the centuries. A shooting at the Allen Premium Outlets in Allen, Texas, killed nine people and injured seven others on Saturday afternoon. The shooter, a male wearing a vest and an assault rifle, was neutralized by an officer who was at the mall on an unrelated call. The officer heard gunshots and went to the scene, where he engaged the suspect. The shooter acted alone, according to the police. The victims ranged from 5 to 61 years old, and were hospitalized with injuries from gunshots or shrapnel. Three of them were in critical condition and four were in stable condition. The police set up reunification areas for the families. The FBI, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, and the local police responded to the shooting. The White House and the Texas governor offered their support and condolences to the victims and their families. The Texas Senator Ted Cruz said he was praying for the victims and offered his help. The shooting caused panic and fear among the shoppers and the staff at the mall. Some people ran and hid, while others raised their arms in the air. Some witnesses described the shooter as a monster and a terrorist. The police asked the public for their help in finding witnesses. The U.S. will finalize a new regulation by May 11 that will deny asylum to many migrants who cross the border illegally from Mexico. The regulation will presume that migrants who passed through another country or did not use other legal pathways are not eligible for asylum. The regulation is part of President Biden's plan to address the expected rise in illegal immigration after Title 42 a public health measure that allows border agents to expel many migrants to Mexico, ends next week. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said the regulation will be extremely challenging to implement and will face pent-up demand and perception among migrants. The White House is considering a short-term extension of the debt ceiling to allow more time to pass a larger increase. The Biden administration's preference remains a long-term deal, but aides are discussing a variety of fallback options, including invoking the 14th Amendment to avert an economic catastrophe if a resolution remains out of reach at the end of the month. Despite robust hiring, the U.S. economy grew just 1.1 percent in the first quarter of 2023 leading analysts to suggest a debt ceiling debacle on top of the Federal Reserve's recent interest rate hikes could trigger a recession, however slight. Dr. Rochelle Walensky is stepping down as director of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Her departure comes as the federal government is winding down its response to the coronavirus pandemic. The public health emergency that was declared in January 2020 is ending May 11. The World Health Organization said Friday that COVID-19 no longer qualifies as a global emergency. Global food prices rose in April for the first time in a year, according to the UN's food agency. The increase was driven by a steep rise in sugar prices, as well as higher costs for meat and rice, which offset losses in the vegetable, cereal and dairy price indices. The spike came amid recovered economies and increased demand for food, as well as worrying trends in the rice market, where prices reached their highest level since 2011. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization's chief economist urged the renewal of the Black Sea Initiative to prevent further spikes in wheat and maize prices.
The news could not have come at a worse time for consumers and central banks, who are facing inflationary pressures and slowdowns in growth. Wildfires are raging across the Canadian province of Alberta. More than 13,000 people have been evacuated as 78 wildfires are burning across the western province. The fires are severe in Fox Lake and Drayton Valley. The evacuation order has been expanded in Lac Ste and County and portions of Big Lakes County. The northern province has been experiencing extremely warm conditions and high winds. There have been 348 wildfires in Alberta since January, burning more than 61,776 acres. Prince Harry arrived at Westminster Abbey without his wife and children. He will return to the U.S. almost immediately after the coronation. Buckingham Palace confirmed. The Duke of York also arrived at the Abbey alongside Harry and the Princess Royal. Prince Andrew was booed by members of the public as he was driven down the mall in a state car. The coronation ceremony was attended by a hundred heads of states with the U.S. maintaining its streak of a president never attending a British royal coronation. First Lady Jill Biden was in attendance. TurboTax's owner Intuit was ordered to pay $141 million to some 4.4 million people across the country. Those impacted were low-income consumers eligible for free, federally supported tax services, but paid TurboTax to file their federal returns across the 2016, 2017, and 2018 tax years due to predatory and deceptive marketing, New York Attorney General Letitia James said. Consumers eligible for restitution payments do not need to file a claim and will receive a check automatically. The amount paid to each eligible consumer ranges from $29 to $85, depending on the number of tax years they qualify for. Ukraine has used the US-made Patriot air defense system to shoot down a Russian hypersonic missile called Kinzhol. The missile had been unstoppable by Ukraine until now and several had struck targets since the start of Russia's war in February 2022. The destruction of the missile demonstrated the potentially game-changing role of the Patriot system, which costs roughly $1 billion per installation. The Patriot system uses three types of missiles, all of which could conceivably take out those Russian bombers that are hovering over Belarus airspace. Thank you for watching. Please support our efforts by liking and sharing the videos. Don't forget to subscribe to get our regular updates.